Securing internal web-based applications and other highly sensitive websites is a massive security concern that legacy VPNs and even modern ZDNA solutions fail to address. Modern distributed work models present new security challenges as employees now access corporate resources from a multitude of locations on a variety of devices. Bring your own device or BIOD policies present security risks that can lead to data breaches, ransomware, and other cyber attacks. This is especially critical for distributed IT and DevOps teams who are using privileged accounts to remotely perform infrastructure monitoring and management. IT and DevOps personnel need a secure, reliable, and scalable way to remotely connect to their machines using RDP, SSH, VNC, MySQL, and other common protocols. At TCM, we've used Keeper for quite some time, and we've talked about how they helped us with password and passkey management, as well as secrets management. And in this video, we'll talk about how we can use Keeper to provide secure, encrypted access to internal web-based applications, cloud apps, admin UIs, and other websites hosting sensitive data without having to share credentials and ensuring zero trust. Thanks to Keeper for sponsoring this video. And if you want to try it out yourself, head over to keeper.io forward slash TCM. And with that, let's take a closer look. All right, so first up, I wanted to run through the connection manager setup just to see how long it takes. And this is the first time I'm doing this. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a timer. We'll see how long it takes. So here we have the documentation and all I've done is come from the installation guide and I'm just gonna do the Docker install because who doesn't like Docker? And then preparing for installation, licensing, installation. So let's curl KCM setup.run. There we go. And give it execute permissions. And let's just run this and see what happens. So would I like to continue with the installation? Yes. To do this set up utility software, do you accept the connection manager? Eula? Yeah, I do. And I have my license key, so let me grab that. All right, do I have SSL termination available? Nope. And let's generate a self signed certificate because we're doing this on our local lab. And let's do AppSec. Oh my god, my P key isn't working. AppSec explained dot local for the domain. And I like MySQL. Let's go with that. Our one time access token or base64 configuration. So this is from the Keeper Secrets Manager, which we haven't set up yet. So I'm going to leave this blank for now. And from when I skim through the documentation, we can update that later on if we need to. I'm not going to go for SAML. And now it's installing. Keeper Connection Manager. So let's see how long it takes. I think the idea here is that we'll see how long it takes for us to not just get installed, but get set up with a secure connection. So I've got a Kali box running. So let's see if we can set up a secure SSH connection to that box. All right, so it's been a couple of minutes downloading the container images, which depending on your internet connection could go faster or slower, but looks like our installation is complete. All right, so let's do a lap on that. And that is four minutes so far, four minutes 47. So let's keep going and make sure that we can actually get logged in and set up with a secure connection. So I'm gonna grab these credentials. Let's go to this and advanced. And I did the self-signed certificate. So of course I don't have a properly valid certificate, but that's fine for our local setup. Oops. Oh no. There we go. And here we are. Okay, so we have no recent connections at the moment, but we can come into settings and then we can come into connections and we can just go ahead and create a new connection. So, so I'm going to swap over to my Kali VM and come to the terminal here and just grab my IP address and it's this one and then come back here and connection name. So let's do Kali SSH and we want SSH 
Location route is fine. Max number of connections. We'll just leave this blank so we can have unlimited connections. Again, unlimited connections. The connection weight is an interesting one. So if you give two for one connection and four for another, the one that has four will be allowed like double the bandwidth of the two, which like makes sense. I suppose you can set your own scale and then figure it out from there. But we'll just leave this blank for now. Host name, we're just gonna use an IP. And then of course 22 for SSH. We don't need any encryption here, we're good. And then we come down and keep a connection manager proxy. We can skip this because we haven't set this up yet. And then we actually need our host, which is our IP here. And then port 22, of course, because it's SSH. And we don't have any crazy authentication because it's just my local lab. So I don't have um, passkey set up, for example. And then, oh, let's go green on black. Very matrix. Keep scrolling down. You can execute certain commands, terminal behavior. Screen recording, very useful if you're giving temporary access to a contractor or third party or something like this. Always switch on the screen recording because I was at an organization once and they started copying loads of sensitive data up to like some random, um, it wasn't quite paste bin, but it was like something similar that was obviously publicly accessible and we caught that because we were recording the uh, session and then we should be good to go. So let's click save and let's come back to home and Kali SSH. And here we are. And then we come back to here and come into Kali SSH and we are on the box. A little confusing because actually this box is also Alex at AppSec Explained, same as this machine, this Ubuntu one, but we are actually here on the Kali machine. As you can see, Kali GNU Linux. And we can go in and do stuff that we want to be able to do. So set up, installed, everything downloaded, secure connection set up. Let me stop the timer in nine minutes, 38. So now that we're done, obviously new connections can be created and they can be privileged, which means that the credentials are hidden from the user or they can be like user specified credentials as well. So you can give them the connection and then force them to enter the password or, or pass a key or something like this. And of course, credentials can be pulled from Keeper Vault via the secrets manager if that's set up as well. And this just makes everything a little bit smoother. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the remote browser isolation that gives users secure access to web applications by rendering them in an isolated browser. And this means that the front-end application code never executes in the context of the user's local device. And of course, this helps prevent things like phishing attacks and other web-based threats. It's straightforward to set up and has a lot of great features, one or two that we'll explore in a minute, but of course is compatible across Windows, Linux, Mac OS, etc., etc and all major browsers are supported as well. So Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Safari, etc. So let's take a look. And here we of course have our old SSH connection and I'm just gonna come into settings once again and come to connections and then new connection. And what I've done is I've set up a Jenkins instance on one of my other machines and we're just going to set up a secure connection to Jenkins. So let's go to here and select the remote browser isolation protocol. And if we come down, we don't need the proxy, and but we do need the URL. So this is just gonna be 192.168.79.143 and we're running on 8080, so typical Jenkins. Now we do have the ability to allow and restrict URL parameters. And of course we can put in wildcards here or put in subdomains or restrict other places. But in this case, I'm just gonna leave this blank so that we're allowed to access everything. And of course, if you want to see more information about any of the features, the documentation is really, really good and steps you through everything you need to know. And speaking of that, we want to check out the browser autofill parameters because if I'm on a team and I have a shared account or if I don't want my users to have all of the credentials all of the time, I can just put them in here and they won't have to handle them. And you can also set this up dynamically as well so that when you rotate your passwords, it automatically updates. But once again, check out the documentation. 
and I'm just gonna put my password in here. And here we have the autofill targets. So hopefully what this means is that the user is going to be automatically logged in once they connect. So if I do page like this, and then HTTP colon slash slash, grab the URL. And I want to do this on the slash login page like this. Next up, I want the username field. And this is going to be the inputs and the name is going to be J underscore username. And I just grabbed this from the Jenkins page. So I went to Jenkins, just used the inspector tool and checked what the name parameter was. And then same for password field. Inputs name equals J underscore password and we should be good to go and I'm just going to quickly double check that I haven't typoed anything because I often do but I think that looks good to me and then I'm just going to come down here and click save and then we can come back and of course we could re-log in as a different user but I'm just going to stay here and then under all connections click Jenkins we connect to the target and you can quickly see that it auto logs us in. So from a user perspective, very fast, very easy to use, and of course, a secure way to access your internal web applications from anywhere that you want. There's a little bit of extra information, like I said here at the documentation. So we have the support protocols, slash remote browser isolation. And you can look at everything from the URL patterns to the browser autofill to the secrets autofill. So for example, if we come down here, and of course, if you have a more complex login, uh, for example, here on live, it walks you through how to set up multiple rules. And then of course, if we come down, we can see we have some integration with Keeper Secrets Manager as well. So this makes everything much easier to maintain once it's set up for the first time. And if you have any other questions about the remote browser isolation, there's a really great FAQ as well. So this kind of handles all of the general questions that you might have, but overall easy to set up, easy to use, no complaints. So next up, we're looking at Vault. And since we looked at the connection manager from more of a setup and administration perspective, I wanted to take a look at the Vault from a user perspective, because if the Vault isn't very good or if it isn't accessible, for example, then teams wouldn't adopt it. People would still save their passwords in Excel files, etc., etc. So the setup here is really, really simple. You just, you download the executable and run it and then you're good to go. And you just sign in, so all good. But let's take a look at the tool itself. And what I've done is I've already imported a bunch of passwords. And here you can see that I've organized them into folders. I've not imported absolutely everything because I don't know, I must have like a thousand passwords, but I've imported a bunch using the import tool and that got me up and running very quickly. And here I've got like a bunch of personal ones. So you can see like Amazon and Audible and Gmail and Hack the Box and Steam and all sorts of things that, you know, people might use on a personal level. And then also AWS API keys, some work logins as well. So once again, AWS, my work Gmail, Gusto, WordPress, WordPress admin, etc., etc. And so a couple of things that I really like off the bat is first, it helps you keep organized. So I think previously when I was using password managers, a lot of the time I would have a custom record type or like a custom input, and then I would have like passwords in clear text and then passwords and passwords fields because it wasn't really clear how to set them up. But here I can just come in and I can choose what kind of record I want. And it's quite nice that it also supports things like passports, et cetera, et cetera, because if you're traveling a lot or if you need like documents and stuff like that, having to every time take pictures and things of your passport and find the number and everything else, it's a real pain. So again, helps you keep organized because I think the UI is pretty clean and we just click next and then we've got a title and we can put like email at email.com. 
And then what I generally like to do is just set a random password. You just click the dice and then click use. And obviously it gives us a nice randomized password. And if we come in here, obviously we can make this longer. So a lot of the time I have my password set to 60 characters. Not all applications support this. So if you just want ease of use, then, you know, maybe go for like 35, but lowercase, uppercase, numbers, symbols, etc., etc. And then let's use this as the default and it's given us a really nice secure password. Then you can give the address, you can add attachments and you can do everything else. And of course there is a browser plugin as well, which supports things like autofill, etc., etc. Now that's great from a user perspective. And of course there are lots of different features for storing sensitive information, but something that I quite like is, is the security audits. And in the previous password managers that I've used that I haven't had this at all. The only feature that I've seen is it will just tag things as duplicates if you've used a duplicate password. And here you can see that obviously I have quite a few passwords that are reused, but it also gives me the strength. So here my audible password is quite weak and you can see that it's very short. So don't hack my audible account, please. And then you can see that I've got some other things that are very strong and I've got some things that are medium, uh, but shared. So overall, 88% strong and generally speaking, my passwords are in a good state and some of the old passwords like this Audible, which is probably years old, it's probably never been changed, is very weak. You can see the reused passwords and of course we can see the weak passwords as well. So we can go in and change those very easily if we need to. And another feature that I really like is the breach watch. So for example, so here we have passwords that have been leaked or found on data breaches and dumps uh, and things like that. And of course, once again, we can just go in and I can come in and ignore, resolve and get that sorted out. So, so this is a really low barrier to entry to keeping on top of your passwords because it's really easy to forget about old passwords that you know you never change and are probably pretty terrible to begin with, but this kind of helps you keep on top of it. And once again, everything is nice and smooth and easy to monitor. And from a audit and compliance perspective, once again, in here in the security audit, you can see how your teams are doing or how your organization is faring. And you might need this for different compliance activities and easy to access just from one click. So that's pretty nice. The last thing I wanted to talk about briefly before we finish up the video is the documentation. And it has everything that's needed from a getting in started, getting everything installed, a sysadmin and administrator perspective, all the way down to like end user guides, for example. So there are also some quick videos as well. So if you have users that want a 60 second video on how to use the tool, then you can send them that. But of course there is extensive documentation as well on, like I say, everything from technical guides to configuration to end user usage. So docs.keeper.io is really, really helpful and it's all really well written and easy to navigate and find what you're after, which is really nice to see. And of course, there is also support from Keeper as well if you need it. We've really only started to scratch the surface in this video, but I hope it gives you some insight into how powerful and easy to use this tool really is. If you want to dive deeper into the vast number of features and integrations, then the Enterprise Guide is a great place to start. And you'll see everything from access management and delegated administration to seam integration. And that's it for this video. If you want to check out Keeper, then of course, head over to keeper.io forward slash TCM, and I'll catch you next time.